Hi, I'm Karen. We're here at Montevilla Sewing Center, and today we're talking about the Juki DX 2000 QVP. In this video, I'm going to talk about the stitch combinations that you can do with this machine. Now, here's an example of where I stitched something out, and there's a little spool of thread. It says Juki Sewing. Now, sewing is actually one stitch that I selected right up here in this category. We have other uh, stitches, cuddly, collection, happy, made by, handmade, and then sewing. So, but Juki, I spelled that out, and I'm going to show you how to do that. And then notice there's no thread between here and here. That's where we trim those out, and you can do that when you're done because these beginning and ending stitches are locked. So you can cut between your uh, stitches and between your lettering. Okay, now to start out with, when you are doing something nice and stiff like denim, you don't need to use any kind of backing. But if you're doing quilting cotton, now notice right here, I did a regular zigzag on this quilt weight cotton and it kind of scrunched up the fabric. Here I used a tearaway stabilizer. Now the tearaway stabilizer made the stitches nice and flat. And then when I'm all done, I can just simply tear this away and it will give me the nice flat stitches. So if you're making quilt labels, use a tear away or wash away stabilizer. Now, you can get a big roll of tear away or wash away stabilizer here at Montevilla, or you can come in and we have cut up a roll of Inspira tear away, 12 inches wide into one yard pieces. And you can see there's the price right there. It's really, you can make a lot of quilt labels just with this here. Now, if you do a lot of decorative stitching, it might be worth getting the larger roll. Okay, so now let's get right into it here. Um, different stitches that you can do, different decorative stitches you can do. You can do a whole line of decorative stitches by pressing the one, two, three here. I'm going to just go delete that. That would give you an entire line of stitches, but if you want just a single stitch, kind of like what I had here, a single stitch instead of a whole line of spools, you would choose this one here. Okay, so the way to choose what stitches you want and find where they are, find your stitch first that you want. Now, I'm gonna spell out love with a heart at the beginning and a heart at the end. So let's find the heart first right here, 08 in this category. So notice I've chosen this because this combines the, the individual stitches with the lettering stitches, and that's what we do. So this has this little moon symbol right here, so I would page over until I get to moon. There I go. That's the category that I wanna choose, 08. I choose 08, it gives me a single heart. That's this category gives me a single heart. Now, if I had chosen 08 in the one, two, three here, that would have given me a whole line of hearts, but I just want a single one. So that's the category. Now I want to spell out love with capital L, small o, v, e. So I push this again. Now this time I'm going to page ahead to block letters. I could also have done script letters or outline letters. There's different categories, but I'm going to just do block letters and say, okay. So once we've done that, now we go down to the keypad here and notice there are letters on the keypad. It's kind of like the old style phone with the, we have the touch dialing and you can spell out a name or number or something like that. So I'm going to start it out with L. Go through here, push it until it shows L, capital L, right up there. Okay. Now I want an O, but I want a lowercase O. So I'm going to go through here, keep pushing it until I get to O. Now if, if you push it too many times and you get the, the wrong letter, just keep cycling it through until you get to the one that you want. Always push OK after each letter because if you just type in another letter, it's just going to start with that letter and it's going to erase the one that you just typed in. So OK after each one. Just remember it this way. If you have a light letter on a dark background, a dark little rectangle, that means you haven't pushed OK yet. If you have a dark letter on a light background, which is what we have right here, and then you can see there's a little cursor line. It's kind of hard to see, but it's right over the, the memory um, symbol. 
that means it's ready for the next letter. So let's go to lowercase v down here on H. I'm going to keep pushing that. You can look up at the screen until I find it. There it is. Push OK. Now I'm going to find E right here. Go through until I get lowercase e and push OK. Now I want to get back to that little heart and put that back in. So we go back here get back to, and you can push the back arrow to get back to that category right there. Go back to 08. First of all, I'm going to say OK. And now it's waiting for me to put in the two-digit um, number. So 08. That gives me that heart. Now, to check my spelling, let's say I had a long name here. I can use the arrow keys to check the entire sequence and it doesn't matter where I stop if I start showing that it will start right from the beginning okay what about if we made a spelling mistake if you make a spelling mistake and you take you know put the wrong letter in it's, it's possible to do that you can move that little cursor until it's under the letter that you want to delete you would go clear and then to put it back in, remember, we've got to get it back into lettering again. So I'm going to go over here to lettering. There we go. Because the last one, last symbol I put in was a heart, not letters. So I'm going to go back here. Now I want to put that O back in here. It's going to put it in right before the letter that has the cursor. Okay, so I'm going to go to O. Yeah, lowercase o is exactly what I want. Push OK, and it's back in there. So it's possible to edit without having to back all the way out of a sequence of stitches. You can just take that and, and change your spelling if you need to. OK. Now, when I was sewing this out before one time, I had a thread breakage partway through. Now, that's kind of annoying, but it does happen, right? Well, that meant I had gotten partway through and in order to start back at the beginning, how do I do that? Well, what you can do is take and save this in your memory, and then you can pull it out of memory and start again. So I'm gonna show you how to save it. This here, if you go down here to this little file folder, push that button. Right now I have something in uh, memory space number one. I have something in memory space number two, but number three is empty. So I'm going to push OK, and then it gives me three different options. Right now, these are grayed out because there's nothing in memory space three, and I, so I can't delete it either, but I can put it in. So I'm going to go OK. So now that pattern was saved. So even if I get completely out of this stitch, well, let's just get completely out of that, okay, or turn off machi my machine, those things are still in my memory. So that's a nice option to have. If your thread breaks and then you're in the middle of a s uh, series of stitches, combination of stitches, you've got a way to get back to the beginning. So let's stitch this out. So to start with, notice it's the foot that I recommend. It's foot I. So this is foot I. Now, how is this different from your A, or all-purpose foot? Your A foot is flat at the bottom here. The I foot has a bit of a channel right here, and that's meant for going over stitches where you have a lot of thread that you're putting into your fabric, real close together stitches. So most of your decorative and lettering stitches would qualify for that. That helps this, the uh, stitch flow through as you're sewing. Now, your um, machine manual is going to recommend tr you turning off your machine before you change your foot. I'm going to leave it on for educational purposes. Also, I'm not putting my finger right into the needle. That's a good habit to not be in. Okay. All right. So let's get started sewing here. Now, I'm going to use... I'm going to use, I've got some thinner uh, tearaway stabilizers, so I decided I'm going to use two layers of it, and that'll work just fine. Okay, let's put that under there, lower our presser foot, and then since this is just going to stitch one cycle of that, heart, love, heart, and then it's going to stop, I could actually take my foot control out and use my start-stop button. We'll do that. There it is, and 
Now you should be watching here, but it actually shows you up here with the cursor what letter you're on and what symbol you're on. There we go. And then I push my cutter button and there we go. Now if I had pushed this here, it would have done a locking stitch, well it already does locking stitches, but it would have done the cutter after at the end of this. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep that off for now. So let's plug this back in, there we go. So I could have also used my foot control, and just kept my foot down on the foot control until it stopped, and when it stops, just lift my foot off the foot control. So here we go. Now, you can take your seam ripper and take off these extra little stitches and cut those. There's a locking stitch right here on the back. So you can just cut these threads on the front really close to your stitches and leave some extra space in between. It, it really is a nice way to make decorative stitches. And certainly you can use other stitches in combination. Say you wanted a heart and a star and a heart and a star, you could do that. I wanna show you something else. This stitch is the little leaf stitch right here, number 14 in this uh, sort of leafy looking category. I took one stitch, programmed it in, and then I did the turnover key. So let's actually get into that. And I'm gonna just kind of show you how I did that. That is, um, get back, get back out of here. Yes, I wanna delete that. It gives you the option, if you push one of these, it gives you the option of, oh, maybe I didn't wanna delete that. It doesn't take it out of memory, it just takes it off the screen and ready to sew. So I'm gonna say yes, I wanna get out of that. Okay, so let's show you how I, I did this. By the way, that's one of the stitches that I had memorized in, uh, in the memory. But I'll show you how I did that. So to get into the decorative stitches, we want a single stitch, so we're gonna go into here, and we want, it's in this leafy looking category, so we're gonna go to that. Push OK. Now it's waiting for me to put in the number, which is 14, 14 right there. OK, that's that stitch. Now I'm gonna put in another 14, and this time I'm gonna turn it over. And now I want a whole line of those stitches like this, not just two of them, but a whole line. So I turn this on here. That is how I got this entire line of stitches. And that's a, a nice way to have a little bit of extra interest to some of, of your sewing. If you're sew, sewing this, say, on the hem of a garment or something like that, you can uh, do that with different stitches that will um, combine that way. Now, one thing about using stitches that are um, decorative stitches in combination with letters, it works best to use the kind of stitches that have a baseline to them, as opposed to stitches that join in the middle, like this stitch number 50 that would join in the middle. That would mean that when it goes down to the baseline of the lettering stitch, there's gonna be a little bit of a jump stitch there. So it works better to use like these series of hearts or diamonds or stars, the stars that have the baseline here as opposed to stars that join somewhere in the middle. So you can try these things out and see which stitches look right for your project. But this is a great way to make quilting labels and um, all kinds of decorative stitches that you wanna do. That's decorative stitching in your stitch combination. I hope this has been helpful to you. If it has, give us a thumbs up. And we've got lots of other videos on this machine, so you can watch them on our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching, stay tuned, bye.